Colorado investigators have a long road ahead piecing together how the Boulder supermarket shooting was carried out and why. News for Jack's crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson joins us on the morning show. Good morning, Ken. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Ken, would you walk us through what police are doing at the scene, given the fact that the reality is it, it could be a while before the victims are even identified? Okay, my FB is acting up now. I, I started out here, and you, can you repeat your oh, question? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Could you walk us through the police investigation at the scene as it would be going on right now? Yeah, they're, they're still collecting evidence. It's, as you can imagine, it's a very large uh, crime scene when you've got 10 casu casu casualties there. Uh, and let, let me explain uh, what the process is when police get calls like this. Uh, when they get calls of an active shooter, it's a chaotic situation. First of all, the police have to try to determine who the suspect is, who the shooter is, uh, and, and sort through victims, sort through uh, various people coming out or, or hiding for cover or whatever. They have to be on high alert. And unfortunately, we lost a police officer doing this particular uh, incident because of, its, uh, because of the nature of it being very chaotic. So right now, today, the day after, uh, they're picking up all of the pieces, uh, collecting evidence, putting this thing all back together, trying to determine where it started, what was the motive, why did it start, why did he target uh, these 10 people, or did he target these 10 people, or were they just random uh, victims that he came across? So a witness says that the gunman didn't say a word before he started shooting. Does that suggest anything to you about motive? That suggests to me that he was on a mission. Uh, I don't know if he's a former employee, I don't know if he uh, knew someone there, but with, with him coming in silently, and not saying a word and just wreaking havoc with a weapon. Uh, he was on a mission to, to cause as much damage as, he's po as he possibly could. Uh, as the time goes on, maybe he'll cooperate with police and, and, and shed more light on his motive or, or the reason why he did it. Uh, but typically speaking, when these type of people come in uh, very silently uh, and just start wreaking havoc, they're, they're just on a mission to cause chaos. Seven mass shootings, Ken, in seven days after a gap uh, that we saw during the pandemic. That's a grim statistic. That's very grim, but it reminds me of an incident that happened right here in our, in our city in Jacksonville at uh, GMAC year, many years ago. James Pugh went in uh, with, a, with a gun. He didn't say a word. He had had words with a bill collector, one of the bill collectors there prior to him arriving at GMAC, and he just came in and he began to shoot uh, people at random as they as they popped up or as they tried to run away from him. So these mass shootings are, are not anything new. We just law enforcement will just have to continue to uh, work towards trying to uh, eradicate this sort of behavior as well as businesses have to put up hard targets for people to be able to come in and, 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 and do these sort of things. Is this also a reminder to us that you know, I, I, I've been enjoying being able to go out in the public, albeit wearing a mask, and not feeling like I've had to worry about something like this happening, because I think it reminds us over the last year that, well, we just haven't seen much of this, that this is something that we do need to be on alert for? Yeah, Jen, typically we don't have to worry about these sort of things because we, we come and go as we please and, and do, do the things that, you know, we have to do. Going to stores, going out and enjoying uh, the city, vacationing and all these sort of things, but we always have to be on high alert. Uh, you know, look for suspicious activity. Look for suspicious people while you're out and about. That doesn't mean that you're paranoid. That just means that you're being weird, uh, uh, wise uh, in, the, in the way that you uh, do things, in the way that you carry yourself. But you've got to always be cognizant of your surroundings. You've got to always be cognizant of people who are acting suspicious. Uh, you don't have to always run. Uh, to the police, but watch them. And if they, if they look suspicious to you, then have somebody look into it. But that's just the world we live in right now. Uh, sadly, News for Jack's crime and safety expert, Ken Jefferson, thanks for your perspective this morning. My pleasure.